Hello everyone. I uh, just figured I would give some some quick forecasts for the 12 signs for the, this month of July and August. So July and August of 2023, summer of 2023, there's about to be a, uh, a few different transits. Venus is going to go retrograde. Um, Venus is in Leo right now. So when Venus is in Leo, uh, it's actually not that great, at least from the standpoint of Vedic astrology, because Venus is starved by the sun. The sun is her, is her enemy. In Vedic astrology, you have this really profound thing where all the planets are friends. They have certain other planets are friends to them, other planets are enemies, and other planets are neutral to them. And by studying these relationships, we learn about just like the archetypal nature of the five elements in creation, and like how or why things are the way they are in life. It's really profoundly deep. And um, in this system, Venus is sees the sun as her enemy. And that's because Venus is about making life like more, like it's about finding the external solutions to, to your problems, to make life more bearable externally, to have more higher quality clothing, you know, higher quality friendships and relationships and things. This is what Venus is about. And you see the sun is the soul, the spirit, the Atman. It doesn't care what clothes it's wearing. You know, the sun is like Shiva. It's just like the pure consciousness it, you know, snakes can be coiling around its neck and it's oblivious to it, you know what I mean? It's just so in the soul and inspired and, you know, it doesn't even notice, you know what I mean? What's going on? It doesn't have time to wash its hair, it's got dreaded hair, all this stuff, whatever. It doesn't even pay attention or notice. Um, so you see the sun symbolizes, uh, like, I'm gonna just be me and live, like, oh, I'm gonna shine my light even if I only get to shine it for one day and I'm gonna die like tomorrow, you know what I mean? It's just this like, ah, kind of thing, like, you know, heroic energy. And that actually, see, that gets distracted by Venus, luxury, beauty, the senses, and all this stuff. So Venus and Sun are actually both mutually enemies. Sun also doesn't like Venus. This is why Sun is debilitated in Libra, sign of Venus. Um, Venus also doesn't like the Sun. And because Venus is about enjoying life, and then you put that Venus in Leo, where it's at right now, and it's just getting scorched up by the sun. And so you'll notice natives that have this, they like, they're very, they're not that best with, they're not the best with their Venus energy. They're not always that diplomatic. They can be forceful um, and like pushy. And they're um, like, they're too easily willing to sacrifice their Venus or their relationships or love or their diplomacy for the sun, for whatever that means for them, for like, and it can mean for their destiny or some higher purpose or whatever. Um, and so like people that have Venus in Leo in their birth chart will have themes like that where, okay, they fall in love, but then they're like, no, but I want to go and be a monk, you know what I mean, in India. And so then they just like kind of ditch their amazing relationship to go and do the, the monk thing or to follow some purpose. Um, and you know, whether that's really like what's right for them or not kind of depends on the rest of the chart, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so Venus in Leo, there may be themes coming up during this time for a lot of natives about uh, like, should I choose the relationship or should I choose my soul purpose or my destiny or my inspiration or becoming who I'm really meant to be, which is the sun, you know, like, should I create, go and create my kingdom? And if so, do I need to sacrifice this relationship or not? And so Venus has to do with choices in general, you see, like, so just on a deeper level, Venus is the planet we're using to evaluate what decisions to do, you know, like, for me to decide to make this video something in my Venus, evaluate and decide to do that. Actually, it was just because I was thinking about it yesterday how I said how I don't, most astrologers don't give predictions like for the 12 signs and I thought, well, maybe I should just try one. You know what I mean? So I'm just trying this for fun. Like these are predictions for the 12 signs. Um, so yeah, so basically uh, just, just notice that Venus um, in Leo might, you know, just be more willing to make uh, or there just might be themes of how we make choices and oh, yeah, this is what I was gonna say So just in general Venus is um, How we make decisions and how we make choices and so across the board if Venus is in Leo a native will make choices um, Beautiful hawk flying by it will make choices that like 
basically don't always lead them to higher fulfillment because they're always so focused on um, their purpose that they ignore their fulfillment. Like you may notice people like that who have really strong sun. You might know people in your life who have really strong sun and really weak Venus. And these are like really like aggressive, like uh, inspired, overachieving people. But they themselves are not that fun to be around maybe. Or they're not that like they don't live they don't take time to care for themselves and rejuvenate themselves and enjoy their life or they don't treat their wife well you know what i mean or they don't treat their other people well you know but they're like a heroic amazing person or a rock star or like a leader or a hero or a movie star or something you know these people will have a venus and leo all right so with that said 12 sign predictions here we go aries all right aries will have love themes going on because aries, mars has been in leo with venus and so there are, so Mars is tied in with this romance theme of Venus going retrograde and Aries will have these themes of do I pursue this love romance? Is this dharmic for me? Is this in line with my inspiration or is it not? And then Mars will go into Virgo in the sixth house and it will be starved by Mercury. So then in August, Aries people will be having all kinds of like frustrating difficulties and, and debts or situations to deal with like, um, health issues, debts, bills, enemies, diseases, stuff like that, whatever. And again, this is all just general stuff. Because again, you can't get that specific without looking at the rest of your chart, right? So, Aries, for June, for July, it's more love, romance, dharmic, inspiring time. For then uh, August, it will still be like that for a part of time, then it'll go into Virgo and become more frustrating difficulty uh, phase. You know what I mean? Putting out fires. Okay, Taurus. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Venus will, so Taurus, their ruling planet, they themselves are gonna go retrograde. Um, so that means that right now, your Taurus people already may be feeling this, the whole themes I mentioned of love and sacrifice and decision making. And Taurus is very wrapped up in this, these relationship themes this summer. Um, Taurus also has had Rahu on its ascendant for the last uh, over a year and year and a half or so. That's just about to leave in August. So things are actually, things have been getting much better for Taurus people since around May, and things will continue to get better for Taurus individuals overall. Get a little bit more lucky, a little bit more freedom, a little bit more expansion um, in y'all's lives uh, because of the Jupiter ingress into Taurus. But um, yeah, Taurus still will have these themes of like decision-making with relationships. Do I need to, should I go forward with this or should I focus on my career more? And it'll be, domestic matters involving the home or vehicles could even be actually like car vehicle accidents if other things are going on because it's with Mars in the fourth house of vehicles and Venus is in bad dignity okay Gemini um, Gemini is gonna have uh, like ex not as much of the love themes but like tons of like friendship developments curiosity like explorations all the fun Gemini stuff is gonna be, it's actually gonna be a lucky time for Gemini while Venus goes retrograde. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a very auspicious time according to what the hawk is telling me right now. Oh, and there's a wood stork. All these, oh, okay, the animals are coming out really validating Venus. Oh, Venus is the one Raj Yoga planet for Gemini Lagna. So Venus is very important. So Venus going retrograde gets it stronger. So this is a good time for Gemini's. It's in the third house. So yeah, like having more fun with just friends, teammates, neighbors, adventures, excitement, exploration, dance, creativity. Uh, just, yeah, fun, fun phase, we'll say. Um, then Mercury gets exalted, and that'll be a really auspicious time for y'all too. So I'm actually, so yeah, I'm forecasting pretty good time for Gemini's for July and August. Um, cancer. Cancer uh, will be having this retrograde at second house. So there could be issues with family, with money. Um, can I provide for my love? You know what I mean? Can I provide for my partner enough if, I'm, if you're a Cancer rising? Um, and, uh, or perhaps um, issues with food, with diet, needing to change something with one's diet. You know, being too decadent or too luxurious with that Venus there. And Mar, and you know what I mean. Maybe needing to making some changes to your diet, um, and maybe like needing to change, make choices about your budget and your uh, like how you spend your money, you know, and what you're responsible for, and how you take care of your responsibilities, because that's the second house. Um, then 
Leo, it's happening in the first house. So it's a major theme of love for Leo coming up for July. It's already been starting with Venus there. So it's just the summer of Leo love, we'll call it that. Um, Venus and Mars will be retrograde, so it can be good because you could potentially meet a dharmic partner because Mars rules your ninth house if you're a Leo, so you could meet an actual partner who's really good for you and really dharmic. Um, potentially, of course, again, Venus is starved by Leo uh, in Leo, so it's, there's also a bad dignity thing going on here and a bad thing, so there are mixed factors and you would want to look at the rest of the chart um, because, yeah, so if you're Leo, you may be thinking like, uh, okay, I need to learn more about how to use my Venus. Maybe I need to compromise here and not just totally sacrifice my Venus. You know what I mean? Like a Venus and Leo person or a very strong Leo person will just so easily sacrifice their Venus love stuff when they need to actually um, like pay more attention to what you say. But again, might depend on the rest of your chart. All right, so then, so Leo, just big thing for love uh, this this July and August. Then um, Virgo, it's going to be a theme of like perhaps going on vacations with your love or uh, vacationing, luxuries, spending more on things. Uh, Venus retrograding the 12th house is actually really important. So for Virgo, this is a very important one. Um, it's very important because uh, one will, whatever... Venus represents in your chart, one might find, wow, I really appreciate that more. When Venus goes to the 12th house, you realize, wow, I really like value that thing after having gone through the whole thing and I'm willing to spend more on it. So we tend to like spend more, or find like the car we truly love when Venus is retrograde. So it could be a good time for car shopping or you meet the woman you're really gonna marry. You know what I mean? When Venus is retrograding in your 12th. Um, then Libra. Uh, Venus is the Lord of Libra. So for Libras, it's them that's going retrograde. It's in the 11th house. So it could be networking, organizations, like groups, finding how to be happy in groups. That hawk is being so loud, isn't he? <laughs> that's the sound of them. Um, the finding some sort of uh, like, uh, having some difficulties within groups, not things not going your way and finding when do I, when do I find what's the right thing to do and when do I, you know, um, just go with the group and compromise. So kind of a lot of frustrating things with groups, but also some good things. Uh, making, having to make new choices and updates with your social group and your network, we could say. But it's a good time for that overall, making changes in that area. And then Scorpio is going to be, uh, it's actually going to be in work, career stuff. Okay, so like, um, could still be some love themes going on, but it's more like, well, big changes in the workplace are going to go on for Scorpios during July and August. Um, and then Sag, it's going to be in the ninth house. So if you're already in a committed relationship, this could be major like marriage. We step it up to the next level. Or again, depending on the rest of the chart, maybe one makes changes and then sacrifices that love for their Dharma or something like that. Could also be a big time for like traveling internationally for Sagittarius people. Um, Capricorn, it'll be happening in the 8th house, so if you love astrology, it'll, it could be a wonderful time for your study of astrology or studying of any 8th house thing, like going deep into yoga, going on a yoga retreat, you know what I mean? Like, it could be a great time to get more astrology readings, to get more psychological therapy done, to work through your vulnerabilities, you know what I mean? Um, hide out in a cave and just meditate all day and study, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, Aquarius, this will be happening in the seventh house. This will be really, oh, oh, Capricorn, eighth house, could be something sort of inheritance or some sort of thing with um, tapping into the luxury and the value of other people in your life, you might have to do more so. Okay, Aquarius, it's all in the seventh house, so it's classic love themes going on. So Aquarius have major love things themes going on for this summer, for July and August. And then Pisces, it's gonna be happening in the sixth house. So there are themes of like, making life work more smoothly for you, making life more bearable, kind of making life like, like just solving a lot of problems. Like for example, I'm a Pisces and I just got back from India. So I have all these sort of like mundane things to deal with, like cleaning up the yard, um, you know, fixing certain things, making more YouTube videos again, just kind of like teaching my classes, getting caught up on all these little details and just sort of managing my life overall. That's sort of what the sixth house has to do is like, uh, you know, staying ahead of your material life, 
So Pisces normally is a sign of like freedom from material life and of not having to deal with all that. And so this with Venus retrograde and Mars there, it's well, there's going to be a lot of attention on that. And you don't want to ignore that at this time. If you're a Pisces, you know, you're going to want to focus on that and um, like, you know, cross your T's and dot your I's as we say, you know, mind your P's and Q's, pay attention, do your chores, follow a good routine, follow a good health routine, a good diet. It's also very true for Pisces because we have Saturn on our ascendant. So Saturn has entered my ascendant now. So I feel a little older and stuff and like, you know, I have to just pay more attention to my health and um, my routine and, you know, stuff like that. Okay, cool. So there's a forecast for Venus retrograde for the 12 signs and there's a for and that's the forecast on, um, you know, just for July and August of 2023. And that's not factoring in all the other plants. So I'm not saying that's the end of it, but that should give you guys some hints. Okay, cool. Let me know. Please give me your feedback. If it's right, maybe I'll do more of them. If it's not that accurate, if people don't resonate with it, then that's fine. Because like I said, it's not always... I don't know, it's just everything depends so much on your personal chart that I'm not always that eager to give these predictions for the 12 signs. And sure, I said some good things and some difficult things. Don't hold your breath about any of these things coming true. Just take it with a grain of salt um, and remember the rest of your chart factors. And, um, and uh, yeah, if you're still watching this, I, uh, yeah, I'm looking, I'm teaching these courses now and I'm teaching a lot more. So. If you're interested in learning astrology with me, I've got an astrology school and I'm eagerly wanting to train more astrologers since I've been back to India. I'm looking for more like quality students. And uh, if you study with me, you can also do the astrological tutoring for only $35 uh, an hour. And then you, you can meet with me one on one and we can just talk for a whole hour about everything you've been studying. Because I know it saves me a lot of time. Normally it's like, I think $60 an hour to do tutoring with me um, because I usually have to make you unlearn all this other stuff you learned from Googling or Wikipedia or random mainstream astrology. It's not really that accurate. So if you're studying with me already, I know you're going to save me a lot of time. So I make the tutoring a lot cheaper. So that's a cool idea. All right. Thanks you guys.